What's going on, friends? While there are many paths to getting more power out of your twin cam Harley-Davidson, one of the most efficient and effective ways to do this is to add more compression to your engine. Increasing compression on your twin cam Harley-Davidson allows you to take full advantage of camshafts and increased displacement from big bore kits. Not only does this mean more power from your performance parts, but this is also going to increase your engine's efficiency. Harley's twin cam engines generally have lower compression from the factory. With the lower compression, this does work well for just cruising and just general day-to-day -day riding. But it's not exactly optimal for all your performance modifications you want to make to your motorcycle. Cams and big bore kits do a lot to increase horsepower in the twin cam engine. But the problem with the lower compression is that you're not really taking full advantage of all these performance parts you're putting on your motorcycle. But before we get all into all that today, please don't forget to hit the like button if you enjoy the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Now, increasing the compression when you're building up your motorcycle, this is going to require less ignition timing. And with today's modern fuel injection, modern fuel injection has better fuel atomization than carburetors did. So you're also going to have a reduced risk of knocking. Higher compression also improves throttle response and makes the engine much more efficient which gives you more power throughout the RPM range and better fuel economy. So you might be thinking, why doesn't Harley-Davidson just do this from the factory? Well, the simple answer is, is that there would honestly be no need for the Screaming Eagle parts catalog to tempt you to spend more money to hop up your motorcycle and, in my opinion, get it to basically be what it should have been when it rolled out of the factory. Well, that may be partly true, but the truth is, Harleys are cruisers, and most people are pretty happy with the factory output with the Stage 1 on it after they do pipes, air cleaner, and a tune. Most people are pretty happy with that, and generally, that kind of power is basically all they need for running down the road. But if you're watching this video, you're like me, and you're not like other people, you get a Harley-Davidson, and you want to hop it up. So if you're doing performance mods, increasing the compression is a must. So let's take a look at Harley's high compression kit just for a 103 twin cam to kind of give us an idea of what a bump in compression and a new set of cams can actually net you in a twin cam engine. This is without any displacement increase, just increased compression and replacing the cams. Now this is Harley's 10 and a half to one compression kit with Screaming Eagle 585 cams for a 103. Now keep in mind, this is still using the factory heads as well. Now, stock horsepower is about 75 horsepower with roughly 92 foot-pounds of torque at the rear wheel. Now, adding a high-lift cam and bumping the compression to 10.5 to 1 with Harley Screaming Eagle high-compression pistons, that jumps to 92 horsepower and 110 foot-pounds of torque. This is all done with retaining the stock 103 displacement. Now, keep in mind... That was with the Screaming Eagle cams and a good bolt-in aftermarket cam and a 103 with a good exhaust system and proper tuning can produce roughly the same numbers. Now, bear in mind, the Screaming Eagle stuff is really soft when it comes to power because generally the Screaming Eagle parts are more centered around being EPA compliant. Now, most aftermarket cams they are designed around basically the stock compression ratio. And kind of what that means is that they're designed to be able to work with the stock compression ratio. Now, that's not to say you can't bump the compression ratio with a bolt-in aftermarket cam and really make the motorcycle come alive. Now, I would highly recommend checking with the cam manufacturer and seeing just how far you can push that compression ratio up. Now let's take a look at the Wood TW777. This is a bolt-in aftermarket cam that can handle a nice little bump in compression over stock. The Wood TW777 in a 103 with 10 and a half to 1 high compression pistons is netting 110 horsepower and 117 foot-pounds of torque. That's an increase of 18 horsepower and 7 foot-pounds of torque over the Screaming Eagle kit. That's also without having to replace the valve springs like the Screaming Eagle kit required. Now that's just a couple of examples of what a bump in compression can do on a twin cam engine. But there are three basic ways to increase compression. One way is to mill the heads. 
This is probably the simplest way to bump your compression without having to completely tear down the top end. Granted, the only thing you gotta do is just remove the heads. Now, if you're milling the heads for a street engine, you would probably want to keep that milling down to about 50 thousandths or less, and then choose a head gasket with the appropriate thickness for the target compression ratio that you're after. Another simple bolt-on way is to go ahead and disassemble the top end and replace the factory flat top pistons with some domed 10 and a half to one high compression pistons. Now, the most complicated and expensive way to do this is to have your combustion chambers reshaped. Now, if you are deciding to go this route, definitely make sure you're having this done by a qualified engine builder that has a qualified machine shop that can get this done properly. Because if they mess this up, you've basically ruined a good set of heads. So, if you're planning on a big bore kit upgrade that offers higher compression, it's definitely worth considering. Even if you're shopping for a cam upgrade, getting a bolt-in camshaft that can handle a compression bump, this might definitely be worth your while in the long run. If you already have an aftermarket cam, there's a little trick by using a 30 thousandths head gasket instead of a 40 or 60 thousandths. It's just a mild bump in compression and maybe even that little extra bit of power that you're looking for. Just make sure that your valves will still clear your pistons. That's very important. You don't want to have a valve come down and kiss a piston. It's good night being at that point. Now, for a street bike, it's really best to keep your compression at 10 and a half to one or less. That way the bike is still gonna run on premium octane fuel. Around here, we've only basically got 91 that's widely available, but depending on what state you live in, you might have 92 or 93 available to you. Because if you get into an engine that has compression over 10 and a half to one, you're either gonna have to use octane booster or mix it with a little race gas, however you wanna do it, but it's kinda of hard to carry around race fuel. You you can always carry around little packets of octane booster to put in there, but that can be a hassle after a while because once you get over 10 and a half to one compression, that's when you can start having some issues with detonation. Another consideration that you'll wanna look at when you bump your compression is if your bike already has factory compression releases installed, you're good to go. Or say if you use SNS's easy start cams, you won't necessarily have to worry about installing a compression release in your cylinder heads. Because, yeah, one side effect of bumping the compression is, yeah, it's definitely harder on your starter, but you got to give something up for something, right? So, guys, if you were curious just what a little bump of compression can do for your twin cam, twin cams come out of the factory about 9.2 to 1, kind of somewhere in that range. It's generally pretty low on the twin cam engine. And especially with the 110s, the 110 had way lower compression than it should have had. But... Just keep in mind, 10 and a half to one, you can still run on pump gas. You might have a little detonation issue here and there. So if I, if I do a bike that's got higher compression like that on my personal ones, I like to carry out a little packet of octane booster just in case I'm noticing a little detonation. Put that in there because sometimes quality of fuel will affect that. So anyhow, guys, if you're wondering about going with a high compression kit, definitely do it. You won't regret it. But anyhow, guys, that's all I've got for you this week. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, please give the video a like, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. But anyhow guys, until next week, you guys stay safe on the streets, please dodge the cars, ride smart, be safe, and I'll see you guys in next week's video. Thanks for watching.